Hey, welcome everybody to Veritas Scoop. I'm Julio Rivera. How are you today? I'm a data protection SME and a practice lead with Veritas. I work with customers to solve their data protection needs, and I also serve as a liaison to PM as well as our customers. You know, the Scoop is an opportunity for you and me to discuss Veritas technology with a Veritas subject matter expert. We're here to answer the questions you may have about NetBacker for VMware. Now, as your proxy today, my goal is to obtain answers to the questions you might have. Now, we have a team of protection national architects ready to answer your questions in the chat, so feel free to ask questions uh, as they come up. I also want to thank the many uh, people that have provided some advanced questions in advance, and I'll be using those questions with our subject matter expert. To help me with those questions, I've invited uh, Mr. Dr. Rob Lindenbush, one of our practice leads, to help us talk about enterprise data protection for VMware. Hey, Rob, how you doing? I'm doing great, Julio. How are you? Fantastic. Um, fantastic. A little bit of background. A little bit of background on myself. Um, I've been with Veritas for eight years now. Um, I have over 20 years of experience with net backup, going back to, and I get fuzzy. It's either three two or three four. Um, as Julio mentioned, I'm a, I'm a data protection practice lead for, for the Americas. Uh, I work on advanced designs, technology, deep dives with customers, do a lot of work with our product management and engineering teams to help ensure that we're delivering um, the features and functionality that our customers really want. That's great. Uh, and so thanks for joining us, uh, Rob. So, hey, uh, we've got a lot of questions about VMware. So you're up for it? I am ready. I love VMware. Here we go. You know, one of the things that comes up quite often is I, I speak to a lot of customers and I'm still amazed at how many customers are still installing agents in their VM, as, VM guest. And when I ask them, they say, hey, it still works fine for me. What's your thoughts about using an agent in the guest to protect VMware? I, it works. I'll, I'll give it that. It does work. Um, however, it has a couple of issues and it, it you're frankly making your life harder than it needs to be. Um, first off, I have to maintain all those agents. Um, the second thing is, you know, my recovery options are a little bit limited. Uh, I can do file and folder recoveries, but if I have to recover that whole virtual machine, I'm got to go use bare metal recovery or I've got to build a new host. It can be kind of complicated. Um, and also, it's, I'm managing it just like a physical environment which means every time I add or delete a server, I've got to go into a policy and I've got to add or delete a server from the policy. You know, that was okay when we had physical hosts and, and new hosts didn't come along all the time. But in, in today's environments with virtualization, hosts are constantly appearing and disappearing. I don't want to have to manage that stuff. I want some automation behind the scenes so that when I spin up a VM, I know it's going to be protected. And, and the last thing that can be problematic is making sure I'm not overloading the physical resources behind my virtual infrastructure. Um, if I'm treating everything as a physical host, I'm not aware of that. And all of a sudden I could be running 50 backups against a single data store all at once, um, which is gonna not only make those backups slow, but make the user experience of customers, of, of, of your end users that are using those resources, it's gonna be subpar as well. Okay, so today uh, a net backup customer does not have to install an agent to protect their VMware environment. Not at all. You just have to point it at a vCenter server. Well, that's going to save customers time, but you know, you, you talked about reducing the load on, on VMware infrastructure. C can you talk a little more about how we do that? Um, well, we have resource limits and we automatically, since, since we understand what's going on underneath the physical layer, uh, what the VMware infrastructure is actually built on. We can intelligently balance our backups across those. So I'm not hitting one ESX server or one data store all at once. And I, I spread my backups out automatically so that I have minimal impact on the, on the environment while I'm doing the protection. So it sounds like what we're doing is providing uh, enhanced performance as well as reliability. Oh, yeah, oh, definitely. As, as by spreading this load out, things become much more reliable. Most of my issues I'll have with backups, are, or many of them, are related to resource exhaustion. I run out of memory or disk or network. Uh, by spreading everything out, 
I'm not going to have that resource exhaustion, and I'm going to have a much more reliable uh, level of performance and, and success rate. That makes perfect sense. You know, you, you mentioned about, you know, when you move away from agents, it opens up other opportunities, maybe to some more modern approaches. Um, is this something you can, uh, you know, tell us about? You know, instead of telling you about it, because it'll get confusing pretty quick if I just talk, um, let me show you. All right, let's do it. Share out my screen. Uh, can everybody, can you see my screen, Julia? I'll tell you in a second. I only have three squirrels working today on my on my back office. There we go. Okay. So here I am logged into my net backup infrastructure um, using the web UI, which has been around um, since 8.1.2. Uh, this is version 9.0.1 uh, that I'm running here. And we get an overview of the environment but there's a few things I want to I want to point out. Uh, the first is um, that this is this is me as a, 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 a as an administrator, um, net back of administrator. I can see everything, all my different workloads, security settings. Um, with the web UI, we now have role based access control, and we can give individual users access to do tasks that they need to do. And we do that through our role-based access control. We have a, a bunch of templates that are already in that you can use to base your uh, setups off of. And we have very fine-grained control here where I can define exactly what you do to which uh, resources within the NetBack environment. You know, I can view hosts. I can't create hosts. I can't, you know, so I have very fine-grained control of what each user can do. And by the way, those users, um, you can see here, I have a user for this, this role, and, and they're a member of the DC1 domain. This is, this is using Active Directory users and groups um, for authentication. So since we're talking about VMware today, let me, let me not be me, the backup admin, uh, and let me switch over. And here I'm logged into the same net backup server, uh, but I'm logged in as a VMware administrator. Well, thank you. I, was, I, I was worried I was going to have to manage all those data, those new, those new workloads. So I appreciate this. You, you don't you don't have to see it. And 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 this is what I've decided. You as 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 a backup admin or as as a security admin, you can separate those roles as well, so that you have somebody who's in charge of providing access, um, who's separate from the person who's administering net backup itself. Um, and I can limit what you can see. So in the case of a VMware admin, well, you know what I can see? I can see the activity monitor, I can see what's going on. Uh, I have this thing called protection plans. For those of you who have been you know, net backup users for a while, you're used to thinking about policies. Protection plans are another way of looking at data protection. Um, with a protection plan, um, I can define um, what I protect how I protect it. Um, it's very easy to do. And let me let me just show you one of them that already exists. Um, so I'll tell you at the top, <coughs> excuse me, um, what features I have access to. I have access to NetBack Accelerator, DD Patient, Long-Term Retention, and Instant Access. And we'll get to Instant Access in a bit. So these backups will be run to a NetBack duplication pool. And I'm actually sticking them on a, a worm storage pool on one of our flex appliances for immutable storage and long-term retention. Um, I can set, and, and these, by the way, these protection plans can be defined by the backup administrator. As a VMware administrator, you don't have to create these, like they can create it for you. Um, and then I, I, I tell it, you know, how often do I want to run backups and what am I going to protect? Um, so. It's a very easy way, you know, we support all transport modes that VMware um, supports. Um, it's a very easy way to manage, how am I going to protect VMs? And that's, yeah, what the, that's what the protection plan defines, is how am I going to protect it? How am I going to store the data? Yeah, and I can tell you, as a VM admin, I don't want to have to really be an expert in that backup. 
I just want to be able to pick something that will fit my needs to run my backups. And, and very often you'll see, you can define these protection plans as for example, uh, silver, gold, and platinum. So you define the level of protection you're providing, the frequency of backups, and then as a VMware admin, you just have to pick which one you want. Now, if I look at the VMware tab, the other place I have to look, you'll see, once it refreshes, uh, wow, there's a whole bunch of VMs here. Um, all I've told, all I've told that backup is what are my VMware servers? What are my vCenter servers? Um, I can also, you know, I can define protection on an individual virtual machine, um, or I can create what we call intelligent VM groups. Uh, many of you who have been longtime net backup users uh, may be for, are probably familiar with what we call VMware intelligent policies. Uh, in, in the web UI with protection plans, we now create what we call intelligent VM groups, which are query-based groups of VMs that I'm going to pr apply protection to. So as an example here, I have uh, a, a group called Oracle VMs. Um, and what I've done is I've created a query that says, hey, if the display name starts with Oracle or OEL, um, include it. And boom, there's my VMs. Now, as VMs are added and created, this list will get updated automatically. And then I can apply protection, you see I've done here, to that entire group. And now as new VMs come up, old VMs uh, go away, I don't have to change anything. I know things are going to be protected. Yeah, I think most customers who have been using intelligent policies for a number of years appreciate the fle flexibility and really the driverless approach where I don't have to get up each morning and worry about those details. And as an administrator, you're so right. I'm, I'm adding VMs on a daily basis, sometimes taking away. So it's good to know I don't have to work with the back of admin on a regular basis about what should be changed in the policy. I can create a VM and, and know with confidence that it's going to be protected the next day. And, and let's say I am the VMware, and, and, and you know, as a VMware administrator, where do I spend my time? The vSphere client. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, so I want to know what, what's going on, but you know, it's great that I have this simplified net backup, but maybe I don't even want simplified net backup. Net backup's not my problem. My problem is VMware. So let me log in here to my vCenter server, which I was logged into and they decided to kick me out for some reason. So there for, in order to uh, integrate with the vSphere, is there like a plugin, I guess, that we install? There is a plugin. I can install the, the net backup plugin. Um, it installs in, in, in the web UI um, and gives you access to a, a subset of net backup features, primarily targeted at uh, validation of protection and recovery. So you can see here, I've selected my vCenter server and I get this great report that tells me, hey, 23 VMs were backed up successfully. I've got four that I'm not reporting on so I can exclude stuff that I don't care about. Um, and well, there's 28 that I haven't backed up at all. And I can go in to an individual virtual machine uh, let's pick this guy. And I can, there's a net backup tab here as well. And I can see whether or not this virtual machine has been backed up. Oh, guess what? This guy isn't. I might need to do something about that. However, I can go look at some of these other guys, this beta win 02. And yep. Here's here's its backup history. So, as a VM um, admin, I don't gotta, event that's as the VM admin, I don't really need to be in the web UI if I don't want to. I can kind of see what's going on from the place that I I'm can used see to. what's going on right from here. And we'll put a lot of information. You'll see the snapshots we take. Um, you'll see um, if I actually look at my virtual machine. You'll see there's actually a custom attribute we create. 
that tells will tell me when the last backup was. Now, as I always say, um, I, I really don't care about backups. Backups are nice. What I really care about is being able to restore them. And when something goes wrong, we don't want to wait to call the backup admin um, who may be on call, maybe out to lunch. I want to be able to restore things. So what I can do as a VMware administrator is go to, once again, our net backup plugin, and I can do VM recoveries. I just run the recovery wizard here real quick. Um, I can tell it which vCenter server, which net backup master server. I can search on my VMs and I can select one. By default, we'll, we'll recover from the last backup we did. Um, or I can select which backup I want to use to recover if I want to go back a little bit. You can see there's tons of VM attributes. Um, I can change those. So I can restore it to a different data center, different pool, different host, different data store. Um, I can do all that. I can tell how I'm going to do my data movement. Um, so, so I can do a restore directly from here. Don't have to ever go into the web UI. If I just want to do a basic full VM restore. So you, you said the word basic. Um, does that imply that maybe the, the web the back of web UI might offer some more flexibility than what the vSphere plugin would do? There is, we've added a lot of stuff in the web UI. Um, that if you're used to using the Java UI or, or, or have been using this for a while and haven't played around with the web UI, um, you may not know you have these options. Don't keep us waiting, bring it on. <laughs> so let me go to my, my VMware again. And, and, and this once again, you know, in a large environment, you're gonna have a lot of VMs. This is very easily searchable. And hey, Rob, let me ask you a question about what I'm looking at. So this can be configured so I only see the VMs that I need to see. I don't need to see all the VMs in my real estate. Is, is that a correct statement? You can you can see, you can limit it by virtual center servers. Okay. So I'm gonna pick uh, beta Win02, my, my, my guinea pig for today. Um, and you can see how it's being protected, but I can click on this recovery points. And you see a calendar over here. And there's little green dots. Everywhere there's a green dot, I have a backup. So, you know, if I go back to yesterday, for example, I had three backups and I have recovery options. If I click on those, you'll see I have four different options. The first one, this restore virtual machine, is a typical restore. Um, that's what I just showed you, you can do through the, the vSphere plugin. Um, it's what you're used to doing through, through the Java admin console. It's, let me put all the data back on production storage. Um, that can be kind of a big stick sometimes. You know, I don't, maybe I don't need to recover the whole VM. Maybe I just need to recover, you know, a few files. Because most of our recoveries are not, I've had an infrastructure failure and my VM is gone. Most of them are a user's made an error and deleted something. Or a single file has been corrupted. So I have an option down here, restore files and folders. With this, I can browse within my backup image and select data to re recover. So I can pick that folder. I can also pick an individual file. Uh, and what I'll be able to do here is restore it to either this VM or another VM. Um, I have to provide some VM credentials because I'm gonna be doing something inside the VM. I can put things in the original directory or restore them to some alternate location. Uh, but the really important thing here is um, I don't have an agent installed on in this host. I don't have to maintain that client. Um, we do this We do this without an agent installed in the host, so I can recover those files and folders directly back into the VM um, very easily um, whenever I want. 
Yeah, now, so, I also... Hey, Rob, as a VM admin, though, as I'm looking at this, you know, maybe I'm interested in the backup and the visibility, but I don't know if I want to get involved with the recovery from the web UI. Uh, could that be restricted so that maybe I could just do backups, but don't worry about restores? Definitely. Our back gives you that capability that, you know, I can let you, I can let you configure backups, but you're not allowed to restore or, or the other way around. Guess what? I don't want you messing with how I'm backing stuff up, but you, if you need access to your data, you can get it. Okay, great. Now you'll note there's another one, download files and folders. This is another thing I can control through RBAC. Um, but if I don't want to recover to the VM, if I just want to get the file, um, I can download those files and folders uh, directly to my PC. Now, let me, let me ask you a question here. So let's just say we're backing up uh, human resources files. I don't know if I'm the HR admin that I want the backup guy to be able to download a file that may be something they shouldn't be looking at. We Am can I limit that? that. You can. Okay. Yep. We can turn that turn that on and off. Very good. So, so you know, there's a couple of ways to get at the most com what I call the most common restore um, you're going to need to do, which is some subset of the data on a system, be it a file, a folder, whatever. Um, but I like something in between that, between just doing a file and moving everything back. Because so let's say, let's say I have you know a large VM, a two terabyte VM, and and finance uses it to run payroll, and it's four o'clock on Friday. Payroll's due at five, and that host is dead; they can't get to it. I got an hour, or I don't get paid. If I have to restore that data and move it back to production storage couple of terabytes, that's going to take a while. So I have a third option, which is instant access. What instant access does is creates a virtual copy of that backup, uh, presents it over NFS back to the ESXi host, and allows you to run the VM from the deduplication pool um, and access that VM almost immediately, regardless of the size, because I haven't actually moved the data yet. Now, I can if I want, um, vMotion, that data after I do that, um, I can determine whether I power on, whether I, you know, various things uh, for my basic VMware recovery. But here I'm just gonna power it on. And I'm gonna hit start recovery. Now I'm gonna go here to my vSphere and go back to hosts and clusters. And there's my VM and it's powering on. I like that. I, I like, you know, as a VM admin, I don't want any surprises. So I like the fact that I, I see what you're doing. And, and boom, it's up. I can log into this guy right now. So instant access, uh, you could use it for file recovery. You could bring it up for some reporting. I could do some testing. Um, and I could also be a, a quick DR scenario for me so I can get operational. Is that is that what you just said? Yep. And I, I, the nice, another nice use for this is, and here I am, I'm, I'm logged in using the system. Another nice use for this is when I have to do upgrades, be it Windows upgrades, Windows patching, Linux upgrades, or, or application upgrades. Um, you know, that's always kind of a worrisome thing. You never know what's going to happen. Um, a lot of my customers have test and dev environments where they've attempted to recreate production so they can do some of this testing. But is it really the same as production? Well, maybe, maybe not. I can do an instant access on that virtual machine bring it up, turn off the network, perform the upgrade, see what happens to the actual production machine when I perform the upgrade. Um, and when I'm done, I can just tear it down and I, I don't have to worry about it anymore. Can I run a few so, of these instant accesses at the same time? Uh, we support um, up to 50 of them at the same time. Yeah, I, I think that'll keep me covered. But, well, that's and awesome. Now, but if I do these things, 
it's very easy to have stuff left behind. And so I don't want to have these necessarily running all the time. You'll note on the VMware tab, I have this instant access virtual machines. And that'll list all the instant accesses that I currently have running. And so when I'm done, I just tell it to delete it. And it goes away. Now, and the changes that were made to that VM, you know, while it was in this state, after you remove this, where are those changes? They're gone. That's They're why gone. I have the option to do a V motion over to my production storage. But okay, what well, we do is we provision this virtual copy. I'm not changing the actual backup data. Gotcha. I never change the backup data. I'm changing this virtual copy. I either have to save that virtual copy by doing a vMotion or otherwise doing it, or I can just delete the virtual machine and it's, it's gone. I got you. But any changes were made are now in the production copy, and we'll pick that up in the next uh, nightly backup run. Yes. No, it makes a lot yes. of sense. It makes a lot of sense. You know, I, I really like the flexibility of how you've been able to map, you know, restore options to, to rec customers' recovery SLAs. Um, that's pretty cool. Do we have uh, some more stuff coming around recovery, or is that it? There are several things coming up uh, in about a month with the latest version of Net Backup. We'll give you some enhanced recovery options, um, some enhanced backup options, uh, a lot of really cool stuff. Um, and and uh, we're actually going to be talking about that, I think, in a couple, three weeks. Okay, so you're going to hold out on us. You want to wait till June 16th? I'm going to hold out a little bit, yeah. <laughs> That's great. No no problem at all. Uh, always keep your audience wanting more. Hey, you know, this, this has been great, and, and I know the guys have been answering some questions in the chat, but uh, why don't we uh, see if there's any other questions that maybe we could a ask, uh, you know, answer live for them. Is that Does that work for you? Sure. All right, so let me, uh, let me, let me take a, a look here. All right, so we got a question from uh, Pranava. Excuse me if I, I can't. I don't pronounce the last name. Uh, the mount feature does it work for BYO environments or only appliances? Um, so, so this actually works um, for both appliances and build your own. Uh, there, there's a requirement on the build your own that it has to be a Red Hat uh, Linux uh, media server, not master server. It's the media server. Um, but yes, you can do this on BYO. Actually, the demo I just did was on a BYO media, master media server running Red Hat. Fantastic, fantastic. Okay, uh, Sebastian from Bell Canada. It seems that 7.0U2 introduced some changes to CDP that broke some backup products. Is that change covered in a hotfix or recent net backup version or has it been accounted for since 7X support was introduced? So, um, I believe that issue might occur if you're running an older version of NetBackup. Um, if you're running NetBackup 9, um, we're already using the, the 7.0 VADP plugin from VMware, and I don't think the issue affects it. Um, I'm not 100% sure on that, however, so don't take what I said as, as gospel. I'd have to double check on that. Um, and, and Sebastian, if you want to, somebody, we, we can take a note and certainly get back to you. Yeah, and Sebastian, you know, re reach out to, uh, you know, Simon or Dimitri to, to cover you guys up there. I'm, I'm sure we can get a, a more detailed answer for you. But thanks for the question. Appreciate it. Okay, um, got another question in from John Nodello. Hey, John. Um, is it possible to generate a daily report listing out of any running instant access VMs, whether MBU or Op Center, or do you have to remember to manually hit each environment to check for them? Well, we, we don't show it in Op Center today. Um, however, uh, it's worth pointing out that everything that you saw in that web UI was done through a published net backup API. So I can, if I have a list of master servers, I can write a script that will, will, will pull the list of running access, instant access and email it to me. Okay. So that, that, that kind of automation is very easy to do um, through our APIs. Fantastic. Um, so uh, Vito from Neil Samita just answered, uh, asked, and uh, Charles answered it, but I'll, I'll do it verbally. What is the most current version? Uh, so yeah, so uh, our current version is 9.0.0.1. 
Um, the uh, next release, which is uh, the project name is Olympic, you may have heard that term, that will be version 9.1. And right now we are on target to be releasing that within the first couple of weeks of um, June. So right around the corner. So we're, looking for, we're pretty excited. Just about around that. the corner. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm just checking to see if there's any other questions that we might want to tackle. And uh, there was a question about the vCenter plugin. That's included. Okay. It's in, in your license. It's actually, if you, there, there's a, a, an admin guide for it. It'll tell you how to get it, the vCenter plugin, and, and how to put it on your, your systems. And that's, okay. you know, another important thing. If you're capacity licensed, you have access. Everything I showed you, you have access to. There's no additional license. Yeah, I, I think that's a great. If uh, you are uh, traditionally uh, licensed, if you are traditionally licensed and you're using VMware protection today through, through, through the enterprise client license, you are already licensed for all this. This is nothing. There's no additional. You've got it all. All you have to do is turn it on and start using it. There was another question I saw that I don't know if got answered. Um, it, it was, um, sorry, it was uh, from, uh, I think it was from Luke. Uh, hi, when I try to restore a single file from a Linux VM at its original location, it's working, but for some reason I lose the ownership of that file when restored. I, I have to look into that one. So should we oh, preserve- That may be a known issue. We should preserve the ownership, yes. I believe. Okay. That's what I would think. Okay, so yeah, once again, just we'll, we'll follow up with you. Um, Pranavav wants to ask the future of Java console. I, I think I could take this one, and I see Charles answering it. Okay. Look, we, we definitely, our, our strategic vision and direction is our web UI, and we are all hands on deck making an investments toward that. Uh, and with every release, we are inching closer and closer to Java parity. Um, and I think our, our goal by, by the Pinnacles release, which is the four release, will be about 85%, and then we'll knock out the remaining few in the release after that. Um, so at some point, uh, we do envision Java will go away, but we're not there yet. And yeah. we also will be respectful of our customers. While we think the web UI is great, we don't want to assume people are going to ju jump to it right away. So it's not going away anytime soon. It's still in it. And I can tell you, we, we did some security uh, uh, investments in the latest release for Java just to show that we haven't abandoned the Java console. Yeah, and, and, and you know, this is actually the perfect forum to talk about that because the approach we're taking is very similar to the approach VMware took um, when they switched from their C-sharp thick client to, to a web-based uh, interface. You know, that C-sharp client stayed around for a long time, but most of the new innovation, most of the new features went into the new UI. And, and that's kind of the approach we're taking. Exactly, exactly. Uh, hey, our good friend Nick uh, from Northwest, and hey, Nick, how are you? Uh, um, Multi-VMDK exclusion is possible as of 8.2 or 8.30.1. Is this available on the Java UI? I believe it is. I, I'd have to double check, and I'm actually looking at one of my servers right now, and it's timed out. Uh, let me see if I can pull it up. Um, however, uh, do, 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 do. Um, you, I can also, now that you mention it, I can manage that VMDK exclusion from the vSphere plugin. So the VMware administrator can say, skip this guy. Yeah, my, my, oh, here I go. Yes, I can do exclude disks. Um, I can list specific disks or I can uh, apply attributes to disks and exclude them. In, in, and that's just looking at the 901 uh, Java UI. Excellent. Well, thanks for that. Uh, another question uh, from Pranavav. And, and Pranavav, there's never, uh, you never ask too many questions. So uh, don't worry about that. Like intelligent, um, I think you're talking about it, in, intelligent policies for SQL and Oracle. Yeah. Anything in queue for IBM, DB2, Sybase, open source DBs? As far as an intelligent policy construct, um, yeah. Nothing I'm aware of. Um, however, I would encourage you to, you know, shoot that back up through your your account team, and uh, we can certainly put it in the queue as as a request. Yeah, and I think it's fair to say, you know, what we try to do is we definitely want to make sure we're we're solving for the broader customer market. 
So, so a lot of that is on demand, hence why you see intelligent policies around SQL and Oracle and, and VMware and, and soon to be coming, you, you'll see that for uh, Nutanix Acropolis. Um, so uh, if there's a, a, enough demand, we'll, we'll definitely uh, make that investment. So yeah, good, good coaching, Rob. Um, let's just see, we got Dan from uh, TELUS. Do you have a date when WebUI will have everything Java Console has? Well, if I had that, I could play Lotto, but <laughs> I, I think we're getting close. <laughs> As I said, yeah, you're you know, going to see you're going to yeah. see a lot of stuff. You know, uh, we're, we're focusing on VMware today, but you're going to see a lot more stuff in the WebUI uh, in the in the 9.1 release here in a few weeks. Um, we've tried to get most of the core functionality that you need to do your job day to day into that web UI in this release. Um, and then, you know, the rest of it will, will, will come along. You know, some of the more esoteric features may take a few more releases, um, but we're trying to get to the point uh, in, in the next release or two that 90% of you can do most, you can do your work without having to use the Java UI. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, Let's see, Nick asked a question. I think he's following up to something Charles responded to, so I'll let Charles tackle that yeah. one. Uh, Jeremy Mitchell, can you exclude VMDK on a host-by-host -host basis? Yes. Simple enough answer. So, so, I can, so, so, so I have a lot of ways I can do stuff, uh, yeah, but I yes, I can exclude VMDKs um, by having them, by putting a custom attribute on that VMDK. Um, I can also, on a host by host basis, select, hey, don't don't use this host. Okay. Don't use this. Uh, and then there's some generic ones where I can just say, hey, exclude all the boot disks. Excellent. Good good flexibility. Um, you know, um, so so Vito has a question. I'm assuming, I don't know if this is specific to VMware or NetBack. Can you restore multiple databases, Oracle and SQL databases at once? So I don't know if you want to take oh, yeah. that. Uh, database inside of a VM or just a database in general? So, yeah, I mean, I'll talk, from, from a VMware standpoint, we do offer native single pass protection of SQL databases. So as part of that VM backup, I will quiesce and catalog that SQL instance and the databases within it. Um, and then I can just do a restore just as I would do a normal SQL server restore. And we don't have any limits on how many restores you can run at once. Um, so I can restore 50 SQL servers, 50 Oracle servers, 50 VMs, as long as I have the resources behind it, um, you know, my deduplication pool, my network, all that stuff, um, to feed it that data, there's no limits. I can restore multiples multiples at once. One cool feature we got coming in that backup 9.1 for SQL is the ability to do a restore from any copy. Um, yeah. Uh, Rob, you want to explain that a little? So, so... In, in the current version, when I'm when I'm running SQL restores, um, it, it restores from the primary copy, which is kind of the behavior um, a lot of you are probably used to. Um, that hey, if I do a restore, it's going to restore from the primary copy. Um, we're adding the feature in um, for for it's in there for VMware today in 9001, uh, and it'll be in there for SQL in, in the next release, where I can pick which copy I want to restore from. So I can say, hey, you know what? I want to restore from copy two or copy three. Um, if for some reason you don't want to use copy one, maybe it's the wrong media type, you don't want to use it. Um, no, that's great. So, so yeah. Okay, good. And for the for, my, for our Oracle users out there, uh, not to be undone, in 9.1, I think we're supporting Oracle Data Guard? Yes, we're supporting Data Guard natively in 9.01, or 9.1. Fantastic. So and if got, you're an Oracle user and you're not on 8.3 or later, you're missing out because we have native rack support in 8.3 and later. Excellent, excellent. Yeah, if, you, if you're getting a sense that 9.1 is going to be a pretty cool and big release, it, it is. I, I think since, uh, I think the last release that was of this size was 8.3, uh, and what you're seeing is a number of workload, cloud, operational simplicity, and security enhancers all being done in this one release. So we're, we're pretty excited about it. Um, so Pierre from, uh, from Rail Canada, if I have a VM that has, that have windows, de have windows deduplicated volumes, can I back up and restore data from it without having NetBackup agent installed? 
So I know I can do a VM DK, a full VMware backup. Um, I'd have to check our compatibility list and our, our VMware guide. I don't think we can do file and folder on Windows deduplicated volumes. Uh, the reason for that is what we do um, in real time as you're doing the backup is we actually understand volume and file system layout for Windows for, for NTFS, for example, um, and, and on the Linux side for ext4, ext3, um, XFS. Uh, so we actually parse that data stream and, and, and understand the file system, the volume layout, and I don't know that that technology has been proliferated to the Windows deduplicated volumes. Um, so it may, I know we can back up the VM, whether I can do file and folder backups, I'm not sure. However, once I've done a full VM backup, I can always do an instant access and just copy those files off that I need to recover. Yeah, so, but Pierre, what we'll do is we'll, we'll get a, uh, uh, an export of all these questions and anything that we felt that we left kind of outstanding, uh, we'll try, we'll get some answers and then we'll follow up either directly with you or we'll have your account team uh, reach out to you. So we'll try to do that. Okay. All right. So it, it looks like the, 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 the questions have slowed down. So why don't we uh, move forward? All right. And I want to thank everybody for, for the question. Really, really good stuff. Um, and I'm getting some background noise myself right there. Um, so yeah, that was the question. So I guess I should have moved my, my, my slide on that one. <laughs> so, um, so listen, at the end of the day, if you haven't figured out by now, and for many of you that have been using our solution, I think you know that Net Backup has some really rich integration with VMware, right? Um, that's integration at the platform level, whether that's working with vCloud Director, uh, as I mentioned, a new uh, uh, you can do new uh, with the Nutanix hypervisor, we support that, and, uh, and Net Backup virtual appliances. Uh, whether you need a scalable and efficient, reliable backups, you know, one thing we're proud of is around VMware, you know, we back up some of the largest VM uh, deployments in the world, and we've done that for years with success. Um, from a restore standpoint, I think Rob has showed uh, not only restore capabilities and the flexibility, but access capabilities, right, with things like RBAC. Uh, and then management, right? So we, I think the, the web UI is, is, is helping our VM admins to better use our technology, right, so they don't feel excluded but at the same time, only give them what they want and only give them what a backup team feels they need. So that's ideal, right? Rob, any thoughts about the, what, what we're doing here? Um, well, you know, this slide is actually uh, giving you a little preview of what's coming in a few weeks. Um, you'll notice that in the upper upper left-hand corner, it says Tanzu. For those of you who aren't familiar with it, Tanzu is VMware's uh, implementation of Kubernetes. And we will be supporting, we will have full Kubernetes support um, for Tanzu as well as a few more platforms, uh, including OpenShift uh, in, in the 9.1 release. You'll see there's a stun-free backups. This is using an IO tap that allows me to do continuous data protection on VMs. Uh, it's coming in 9.1. Uh, VM, VM rollback, so block level rollback um, of VMs is gonna be in 9.1. And one thing we didn't touch on, um, Today, I can take a VM backup and restore it to an AWS VM. We, we do that conversion automatically. Uh, in the next release, we're gonna be able to do that with Azure as well. So for, from a disaster recovery standpoint, if you're looking at cloud for a, for a DR platform, um, I don't have to have any infrastructure up there. I can just, when I need to restore and then my VMs become AMIs or whatever Azure calls them, um, and, and I'm off to the races. That, that's great. And, you know, what Rob just covered, that's what we're going to be speaking to in our next session on June 16th. So if you want to see a demo of that stuff or we may just have some discussion about some of those topics, uh, definitely join us uh, for that meeting. Um, so listen, you know, I think you could see we are making some great technology investments for you. But we want to help our customers jumpstart their net back of a VMware experience. So um, if our feature set, you know, was not good enough reason, here's another. Uh, we've got a great offer, buy one friend in terabyte, get one free. So customers that are willing to switch to using NetBack of VMware. And that's just, that's just not brand new customers, right? So if you're a customer today using an agent-based approach, if you're a customer today maybe using a, a competitor approach for the VMware, right? Or you're a brand new customer to NetBackup, you all are eligible for these, uh, for these capabilities. And you might say, well, I already have my front end terabytes for VMware. Well, guess what? You may need front end terabytes in another area. 
just reposition some of those to, uh, towards VMware, get the take advantage of take advantage of the the opportunity and use the, the front end terabytes that you do have, move them over to that other application. So to us, it's a great option. It is a limited opportunity, and for our partners out there, right? You're not forgotten, right? You know, you're great to us, and we need your support. Partners will also receive some additional upfront margin if they assist us with the transaction. So really, I hope what you like that message. I hope you like the technology. I, I hope you enjoyed what Rob said and, and the questions we have. And if you really did, if you want to kind of keep this momentum going, join us again, right, on June 16th from 10 to 11. You'll get Robin back, Robin Mayo back, Robin me back. It's like Robin Batman, I guess, something like that. But we'll do yeah. that. Uh, on that session, we're going to focus on fast recovery, like Rob mentioned. We'll talk about next generation virtualization. And most of all, we're going to answer your questions. And I think we did a good job there, but I don't want to kind of leave, make sure we have no outstanding questions. We don't. So not only did you get all your answers, you got a lot of information. We're going to give you back almost 15 minutes in your day. We want to thank you for your time. And thanks, everyone. Be safe. Thanks, Rob. Yep. Thank you.